Ian in. Uh, speaking of Ethereum 2.0, uh, we have some some interesting news yes. from personalities side of. The- yes, we have some news. <laughs> so you know this company, um, Bitmain, they sell mining machine uh, storage. So they have a shortage, and it has been worsening and worsening right now. And right now, the executive directors decided to pull all the efforts through Ethereum uh, 2.0 staking. So that's quite interesting because it means that they are switching gears and instead of pointing to their actual hardware they are selling, they are trying to make pulls because if you are not on uh, on these pulls, you should uh, like to take a stake. You should put like 32 Ethereums yeah. uh, to enter, but instead uh, with, with this pool, they only take five Ethereums per person. So they are making these pools and staking into the benefits that are coming with Ethereum 2.0. So that was quite big um, because I, I think it changes. I mean, the mining uh, industry has been shifting lately. Um, and this is definitely <laughs> worth mentioning because th- these are good news. Yes. Yeah, so- uh, big news. Yeah, yeah, for people. Good and big. <laughs> and for people that have been in crypto for for a while, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's quite large news in terms of personalities of who is involved. So, Bitmain founder, if I remember correctly, is Jihan Wu, uh, and uh, he's been uh, he's been in Bitcoin for a long time, and then uh, he shifted gears, and uh, I think so. He and Roger were uh, creator of not creator supporter of Bitcoin Cash proposal and the main the main guy behind that now uh, they were um, they were doing a lot of things together right uh, yeah I, I think this all uh, the, the part parts of, of general plan plan of F, F 2.0 because proof of stake is uh, also a, a very a very important aspect of, of uh, this version <laughs> a new version of ethereum right so Yes, this all should should work in conjunction. Yeah, yeah, the pool of stake. And so, speaking about pools, just for the people that may, might not uh, might not understand what's going on there, but there are there are also mining pools. Basically, uh, you want to participate in the in this economy to become a miner or become a validator on the proof of stake chain, right? On the proof of work chain, you want to become a miner. On proof of stake chain, you want to become a validator. But on proof of work. Uh, you have to invest a lot of money into your, uh, let's say, first it was CPUs and then GPUs and now it's ASICs and ASIC farms. You have to invest a lot to be able to even win one block. To even win one block, you have to work like, you have to go to a lot of hashes, right? And if you don't, like, when you have the first block found, you will get the reward. But until you find that block, you have to expend lot of pa- lots of power, etc. Because the hash pa- the, the the hash rate is so big now, the difficulty of mining. And so, if you don't get to this to this first block to this reward, you are dead. Basically, you you just wasted all the money that that you you are trying to get there. And so, ma- what mining pools created is they said um, let's um, let's have uh, uh, you can you can still participate in this system. And uh, we are going to so, so basically, you are going to try to find the next block to next to the, the next the next block uh, based on this difficulty, and some of you might accidentally win. But whenever someone wins, this person shares the the shares the money with everyone, right? With everyone proportionally to the work that they have done. And how it's calculated, it's another story, but basically like to find the correct block on Ethereum, you have to find a, a block uh, whose hash has a, a certain number of, of zeros, of zero bits at the beginning, right? And uh, th- that's what, what's referred to as difficulty, etc. right? The difficulty bits. But then, uh, let's say you worked for one hour and you didn't f- find much, but you find you found some blocks that have like five zeros or ten zeros at the beginning, and then you submit those to the pools, and then pools know that at least you expend this amount of work, that uh, proportional to everyone else, and they can pay you proportionally to that. That at least okay, if you found some, this guarantees that you spent at least some time trying to find those those blocks, even though it's not the solution to the block, and so everyone wins that way. 
on this, on proof of stake is the same thing now validators they need uh, how much they need 32 ether right which is how much in uh, us dollars let's say uh, anyone remembers go to um yeah yeah it was 32 yes 32 ethereum multiplied by 3500 yes it's more than a hundred thousand dollars so not everyone Many people want yeah, to participate in, in uh, being a validator, but they cannot do this so because like it's more than a hundred thousand dollars they have to to. to. So uh, this this uh, this um, uh, pool staking pool right validator pool allows them to do so right. How much they need now instead of thirty two ether? They need five to enter the pooling. All right, so five. So it. it significantly changes the amount yeah i mean it's a lot of money still but uh yeah yeah and it's still like of course not everyone will will become a, a validator because like it, you need the you need the consensus of most of the validators to accept the next block and imagine if it's a lot of validators so it's on purpose built like that so that there is not many parties that have to be in consensus about what the ne next block is right uh, but still, so it's it's much better. So it's uh, 3,500 multiplied by five. It's 17,500 uh, $17, dollars, which is much less, right? Many people can can um, well, not many, but some people can afford it more than 100k. So there is one other thing that I want to mention is that the problem with the mining pool is that okay, imagine you pay, imagine you have like. 20 people in the in the pool, right? And they all trying to find the next block and then one person finds this block. But once they found the block, they take all the reward to themselves, right? And they don't share with anyone. So how do mining pools secure against that? Well, the thing is that uh, they tell you that that the, the, the basically the first transaction of the block is the, the Coinbase transaction, which means, okay, who is going to receive the reward? Once this block is found, who is going to receive the, the, the reward? And they give every single uh, miner that is participating in this pool, they give this template, and then you have to mine on this template, which is which which sends money to the pool, not to you, which sends to the pool address, and then the pool pays back to you and everyone else, right? Based on based on that, so that's how it secures against that. So there is a template, a certain template of the block that the mining pool sends to you, and then you uh, try to find the hash that corresponds to the right. So try to fill in the rest of the block and see if the, the, the hash is uh, enough difficulty. But the problem with that is that previously, the, basically the whole security of the system that Satoshi Nakamoto invented relies on the fact that there is this lottery going on between people who's going to win the next block. Because if I'm trying to push some invalid transaction or not even invalid, but do some double spending, if I'm going to win the next block, oh, that's very easy, right? Then I pay to this guy and this guy thinks, okay, that uh, I paid to them, but actually I put another transaction to this block or I signed two blocks together, right? So it's very important that it's a lottery and I cannot control who's going to win the next block. Okay, there still is a chance that I might win the next block. And that's why they say to you to wait for a few confirmations. So even if I, the evil me, wins the next block and does something shady with it, then the next person who's going to win the next block is not going to be me statistically, right? It's going to be someone else. And so as soon as I don't have the majority of the network and we have six, six blocks that confirmed your transaction, then you can you know, rest and, and okay, you, you can be calm about the fact that your transaction is not going to be deleted and then some other block can be can be replaced, which is called reorgs and we can go into that. But this kind of is screwed up by the pools because then the pools send you the template of which block to mine on, right? And they might include some rules, for example, that they don't accept certain transactions, so there might be a censorship. So there is this, let's say there is a pool that takes uh, like 20% hash rate of the network, and uh, they all send the same template to all the people that participate there. And they can, you know, they can dictate whatever rules they, they, they want, right? And this could lead to, to censorship and this could lead to some, some, some shady stuff. So that's not very, you, normally you would do it yourself. You would validate transactions and you would do yourself, everything on your node. But this someone else does the validation for you and you just mine the solution. Is this the same on the proof of stake? I have no idea, uh, but I think it is, right? Because if you have a staking, 
uh, so 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 how is it done right so basically people deposit those five E's they deposit into the same contract probably we need to go into the details of that maybe in the next one and to to have this 32 E's right so basically this Jihan Wu um, uh, is is now is now buying this for you right you send them five five E's each and then he buys for you this ability to participate as a validator but then I think that Jihan Wu's software is doing all the validation and you just get the money back basically. So you gave them five ETH and you re it re it get some percentage on that. But security wise, uh, whoever is the, uh, the, let's not talk bad about Jihan, but whoever is the owner of the validator can now do shady shit with the blocks, right? Uh, and of course there is, uh, there is another, uh, there's lots of other uh, validators that can, so they're, they're not going to do that because they can lose the collateral, but they can, they still have a lot of power, right? It's not now decentralized into small providers. It's like one big, uh, it might be 32 ETH or it might be one big validator with a lot of ETH deposited, right? And so that, uh, that might uh, not be very good for the decentralization. What do you think? Well, the the, on the good side, people who want to participate uh, and have five five Ethereum's, uh, five Ether, sorry, you are you can um, get up to ten percent uh, over what you put into. Uh, of course, the assets will be blocked for at least a year. All right, F five percent more than you would have earned having thirty-two Ether, right? Up to ten. Up to ten. Up, yeah, up to ten percent. All right. Yeah, returns. All right, yeah. that's very uh, yummy. Now every everyone will go there, and so, oh, we don't care about decentralization. If we can earn ten percent more, of course, let's just go. <laughs> let's just uh, well, send money there. You know, ten percent, ten percent on dollars, it's a lot. So ten percent on either, it's quite more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, like, I'm not sure how secure it is. So we need to see if this is uh, if you send money to to like uh, Bitmain or whatever is going to be the, the pool of Ethereum, if they can control this money now, if they can somehow like, like it is with centralized exchanges basically, right? So they can steal the money. And so that, that might be an issue, but we can see if they do some smart things with smart contracts that they cannot take the money. Uh, there is still this, this problem, right? So uh, in, in, uh, so in the pool, this cannot happen, but in the proof of stake pool, in proof of work pool, I don't know if this can happen or not, but in the proof of stake pool, you can lose all your money, even if you're inside the pool and even if you're a validator. If you sign an invalid transaction or if some hacker hacks into your server and signs an invalid transaction, you're gonna lose all your collateral because the system will say, what the hell, like this transaction is invalid, we know that, and now you're gonna be punished because you're a bad validator, right? You you didn't, you, you, you produced a, a wrong transaction and now the whole system is gonna punish you. Now, imagine if you send this five ether to a pool and then they uh, create a 32 ether pool and I hope that it's, they, they chunk it down so that if one thing goes wrong, it's not like, not the whole thing just gets wiped out, right? Not all of those ether is gonna be lost. But now basically by participating in this pool, it's not just the risk for the system for decentralization, but you also carry a personal risk that uh, your five ETH might become uh, the victim if something is mis misconfigured on the server, if someone will hack into the server, etc etc they might not be able to take the funds out but they might be able to sign some transaction that uh, that, that that harms you and then the money is lost right is that do, do you understand that correctly that this could happen but on the other hand 10 percent more so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the risk you will have to uh to, to think about whether you want to do that all right so no pay no gain my friend <laughs> yeah yeah Let's see. Let's see what else we have. Uh, so I think Amaury can talk about uh, his topic that he prepared. Can talk about yeah. Spanish-speaking countries. And, and <laughs> yeah, well, let's move on to uh, a topic that, that is... To watch the full episode, click the first link in the description. If you want others to discover this content, please click like. And if you want more content like this, consider subscribing. Also chat with us in our Telegram group, which will be the second link in the description. See you there.